the Experience Pros Radio Show, home of the original Fan Bragging Fridays. Take just 20 seconds to become a revolutionary by sharing a Fan Bragging story of great customer service on Facebook.com slash Experience Pros. Now, back to Angel and Eric, the Experience Pros. And is telling your story so that it gets heard, understood, and remembered sometimes feel like Mission Impossible? Well, Jerry Brown of Jerry Brown PR certainly can help. Absolutely. Jerry's here on the Experience Pros Radio Show every week at this time with a tip to help you tell your story. Welcome back, Jerry. What's our storytelling tip this week? Well, thanks. Glad to be here. The tip today is don't commit death by PowerPoint. And as you mentioned a minute or so ago, you know, I was playing Clue last night and I got the weapon down right away. It was PowerPoint. But I couldn't <laughs> yeah. figure out if it was Colonel Mustard in the study or Miss Scarlet in the conservatory or maybe Professor Plum in the uh, ballroom. You know what I figured out? They're all guilty. They're yeah. all every, guilty. Every one of them. You know, I mean, the sad fact is that there are a lot of people out there who are committing death by PowerPoint. And oh, they amen. do it. I mean, pretty much anywhere, you know, they do it in they do it in boardrooms and conference rooms and hotel ballrooms, pretty much anywhere where you'll find a speaker in front of an audience. Jerry, there are people all around America going, yes, <laughs> yes, I'm going to turn up my volume. Well, there Can are people, them? and we've seen it, you know, no, very few people do PowerPoint very well. But then you've got the other side of the coin. Jerry, this is all I know is to do PowerPoint. You have to. That's what the professor That's, said, right? Well, and actually, I'm a big fan of PowerPoint if it's done correctly. I think it can be a very powerful tool for telling your story. But there's some things you need to avoid that people do all the time, and there's a couple things you should do. And some of the things you should avoid, and really the number one, the one that I think drives us all nuts, and it really is the number one way people commit uh, death by PowerPoint is they put all these words on their slides and then they read them to oh, you. Yes. Oh, now yes. you've already read them and now you're reading along, you know. And I can get, you know, I came to see the man's <laughs> face or the woman's face, right. not the backside. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, here's the way I look at it. You know, most of us who are parents have read to our kids at some time, and if you've done that, you know, good for you. But if you're reading your presentation to an audience, that's not so good. That's yeah. bad for you, actually. So don't read your slides to your audience. Don't fill your slides with words. I say a maximum, a maximum of six bullets per slide with six words per bullet. That's the maximum. And if all of your bullets have that many words in them and you have that many bullets on every slide, then just wake me up when you're done because <laughs> I'm not going to be, I'm not going to stay awake, you know? Um and don't use all these funny fonts and all these different font sizes and all that sort of stuff. I suggest... But what about that thing that just scrolls in and goes, bam, like, you know, the old Batman show? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, why don't you skip that, too? You know, the reality is that you want your audience to focus on your message and not all these little PowerPoint toys that people get carried away with. You and, know? It, and it kind of is. It's almost like a, let me show you what I learned in oh. when I learned how to use PowerPoint. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and they, yeah, words bounce in or twirl in or fly in or whatever. No, don't do that. You know? Okay. Um, th some other things to look at is, um, well, I suggest you use one, and I say one for the entire presentation, either Arial, Calibri, which is kind of, uh, I think, Microsoft's sub uh, a replacement for Arial or Times New Roman. Th these are fonts. These are fonts. Okay. Use one of those throughout your presentation, <laughs> whichever one you pick. But don't use any others, and don't use, don't mix and match. And don't use it's, all of them. Isn't that like taking the space shuttle for a ride, and you know, just from you know one place to the next instead of going to the moon? I mean, shouldn't we use all those things? Well, you certainly can, and you can have fun doing it. But your audience is just going to go, oh yeah, my gosh. I'm with you. You know, plus they're going to get so caught up in what all the gee whiz things you're doing and which one you're going to do next that they're not going to pay attention to what right, you so say. I, I use one font. What about uh, can I capitalize bold and underline all the time? Well, you can, but it, it sort of loses its power because those are really good tools for emphasis. And if you use them all the time, you know, then it's they, they, they can't do their real job. So I would it's say like, not do that. It's like using exclamation points, you know. Or all of her case. You know, right. what, like five exclamation points because we are so excited about this. Right. All right. Yeah. Stop looking at me. Let's get back to Jerry. What else What, what else are, is on our list of don't do's with PowerPoint? Well, um, 
Because, you know, everybody's pulling up their PowerPoint presentation right now, or they're thinking about it going, you should be. I need to fix this. You I should need to be. fix this. Absolutely. Well, well, another real big one that I see a lot is if you have a light background, mm -hmm. use a black or a really dark color uh, text for your, you know, for your text. And if you have a dark background, then use white or yellow, um, something light. Very you contrasting. Want, you want as much contrast as possible. And I have found that a lot of other color. I mean, I find that a really dark background with yellow, bright yellow or white or a, um, you know, black on a light background are the best. You can do other colors if it fits your color scheme, but you really have to pay attention because they get kind of iffy in a hurry if you're not careful. All right. All red, right. Red, by the way, is a real bad one. Are you one. sleeping? Oh, what? oh are you sorry. Sleeping? We, I was in a PowerPoint presentation and the lights were too dark. Yeah, because, you know, that's the other thing that the other mistake people make is they, people have to see my slides, so let's turn all of the lights out. That well, turns all the lights out, including your guests. Yeah, and, and who's the star of the show? It's not your PowerPoint, it's you. Oh. We came to hear you. So if you need to turn the lights down so that we can see your slides, that's okay, but we need to be able to see you. You. What I think is so funny, Jerry, is as you talk about death by PowerPoint, we've all we've all seen this. We've probably all kind of uh, committed this uh, this crime ourselves. But one of the things I love about Jerry Brown with Jerry Brown PR is he talks about how to make it better yep. and what you can do to get your story heard, understood, and remembered. So what are some things we can do? Because you say that PowerPoint can be a really great great tool for making your presentation, but rarely do we see it. Yeah. Well. Pictures, lots of pictures. In fact, I love to put a picture that covers the entire slide mm. and then maybe two or three words. That's going to tell me a lot more about what I, I'm going to tell you a lot more about what I have to say than me putting a zillion words. So a picture words. really is worth a thousand exactly words. That's exactly what I was going yeah. to say. No, absolutely. Right? Yeah, and, and um, I, I believe that unless there's a reason why you can't do it and with all the stock photo houses and how cheap they are, there's really no excuse for not having lots of pictures. But I like to see at least some kind of picture or some sort of image on every slide if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be a slide or two where you have words only, but there ought not be very many, and they ought to be the exception, not the rule. Um, and the picture ought to fit what you're saying. In other words, don't put up a picture of a red brick building if you're talking about walking in the woods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, okay. It, it's kind of... It's funny he has to mention that. You know, Absolutely. there's a reason for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, there is. And then, you know, um, I think of PowerPoint presentations as kind of a roadmap for me and my audience, not as a script. If I'm putting up a lot of word slides and just reading them, that's, that's a script. I mean, I might as well just type them up and put them on a piece of paper and do it that way. Whereas if I pull up a slide, I know that when this slide is up, I have this point I want to make. Right. Make it. Tell it to me. Don't read it to me. Tell it to me. And then move on. So for me, the roadmap is that I'm using the slides that, oh, yeah, I'm on this slide and I know in my head that this is the point I want to make. So it's kind of my roadmap through. But I'm still talking the presentation. I'm not reading or memorizing a script. But it's also a roadmap for your audience because it helps them keep track of where you are. I love it. Make sure you do not commit death by PowerPoint. Please. This, <laughs> this week's uh, tip comes from Jerry Brown of Jerry Brown PR. You can find him at, also at Jerry's blog at jerrybrownpr.com. You know, the late journalist, screenwriter, and De Denver native Gene Fowler once said, writing is easy. All you do is sit staring at a blank sheet of paper until drops of blood form on your forehead. Keep your forehead dry and hire Jerry Brown of Jerry Brown PR to help you write blog posts, social media postings, articles, press releases, PowerPoint presentations, and more. He can also edit what you've all already written. You can reach Jerry at Jerry at JerryBrownPR.com or by phone 303-594-8016. That's 303-594-8016. You're listening to the most positive business talk show in America. The experienced pros are here to help you get your business right. To learn more, visit experiencepros.com.